Yeah, welcome back. We're now going to move on with points number 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13. So we're going to do quite a lot in this video. So the first thing we're going to look at is point number 8 on the Office Move example, which is to attach a note to the distribute boxes task to say, remember to label the boxes clearly. So if you want to do anything with any task, you should double click the task. So we want to attach a note to distribute boxes. So if we double click distribute boxes, we get this dialog box, which has all the information about that particular task. Notice that you've got your tabs up here on top and one of those tabs is called notes. So in there we're going to write remember to label boxes. And we say OK and notice now there's a post-it, a little yellow post-it on the left hand side saying remember to label boxes which when you hover over it shows you the note. So the next thing you're asked to do, point number nine, is to enter a recurring task for a weekly meeting, one hour duration and repeat it for five weeks on a Wednesday. And then you're asked to move that meeting task. So we're going to put the meeting task in at the bottom of your list of tasks. So that's row 22. You go to your task tab and over here underneath the task icon, if you drop that down, there will be a recurring task. So you choose recurring task from here. So you need to make sure that you're in the right place before you do that. So we did that and then we went to recurring task and it's a weekly meeting. It's one, not one day, but one hour. So we change the D to a H. It's recurring weekly on a Wednesday and ending after five weeks. Just be careful that you put the five weeks here. So end after five occurrences, not recur every five weeks. The difference there is you'd have one this week and you wouldn't have one for another five weeks up here. Whereas here you're saying uh, every week for five weeks. Uh, so it's down here, you put your number five. So you, you say okay to that. And now your recurring task of weekly meetings has appeared. So the next thing you need to do is to move that. So minimize it. And if you click on the row by going to the number on the left hand side, click on the row, it'll highlight the row. And once it's highlighted, if you go to the left hand side again, you'll get this mouse with a four way arrow. When you have that mouse, you can click and drag and notice then you get this black line that allows you to drag it up and you put it under Office Move. So it's the first activity within your project. So there's my weekly meetings entered and moved, which is point number nine. Point number 10 then asks you to link all tasks. Each task follows from the one before it, except for finalize move, which follows from sign lease. So we'll drag across our bar here so we can see a little bit more of what we're doing and it says so it tells you that every activity follows from the one before so weekly meetings don't get linked weekly meetings are just meetings that don't get li linked to any activities so our first activity here is to view premises so it's our first activity so we don't do anything with it the next activity is meet the directors or meet with directors and it follows from the task ahead of it so what matters here is you go to the predecessor column and you tell this activity which is its predecessor. So in this case, its predecessor is view premises. The figure you put in is the row of the predecessor. So the predecessor sits in row nine. So in here we say predecessor nine, which means predecessor activity is in row nine. And notice now if you go out to the to the Gantt chart view, you'll see a little arrow has arrived that links those two activities. Additionally, you'll notice that your, your calculated duration here for your summary task has also changed. OK, so the next activity is sign lease. It also follows from the activity before it. So it follows from 10. The milestones, they also need to get linked. So a milestone, it's following from 11. We're now sitting in a summary task field. You never enter anything into the summary tasks. They get calculated. So you leave that alone. The next activity is your order boxes. It follows from the one before it. So it follows from 12. OK, because the one before it is premises found. You leave the summary activities out of it. And now your next activity is get quotes, which follows on from order boxes. So that's 14 and finalize move date. Finalize move date is the activity that doesn't follow from the one before it. It follows from sign lease. So if you look back at sign lease, you'll see sign lease is in row 11. So finalize move date follows from row 11. But we're back then with everything following from the one before it. So move arranged follows from the one before it, which is in row 16. Skip the summary row. Distribute boxes follows from the one before it. The one before it is move arranged, which is in row 17. 
pack boxes follows from distribute boxes, which is in row 19. Disconnect computers follows pack boxes, so that's 20 and 21 and 22. And then going down to the final branch of the tree, the end move, reconnect computers follows from the one before it, which is 23. And unpack boxes follows from reconnect computers which is 25 and 26. And all your activities have now been connected out here in the Gantt chart and your duration has become considerably longer because the activities are no longer happening at the same time. So that's point number 10, linking all your tasks. So the key to it is to enter in the predecessor column here the number of the row of the activity it's following. So you look at the activity it's following, you look at the row number of the activity and you put that in the predecessor tab. So the next thing you're asked to do is that all tasks have a finish to start relationship, which is the standard relationship, except for get quotes and order boxes, which can start at the same time. So get quotes follows order boxes. It's telling you that the traditional relationship here, this traditional connection or arrow is that order boxes needs to finish before get quotes can start. But this one is different. If you double click get quotes and you go to your predecessor tab, here is your type of relationship and the standard is finished to start. But we're saying this is a slightly different relationship they're connected, but they can start at the same time. So you choose start to start and you say, OK, and notice now it's got an SS at the end of the number. So get quotes follows from order boxes, but with a start to start relationship. To answer that point number 10 with the start to start relationship, you go to the succeeding activity in order to put in the change in relationship. So that's point number 11. Then point number 12 is putting in a constraint. It tells you distribute boxes cannot take place until after January 11th. So we double click because if you want to do anything with the task, you double click it. So we double click distribute boxes. And if you go to the advanced tab in the middle of the dialog box here, you'll see a constraint type as soon as possible. All activities are entered into Microsoft Project uh, with an, a constraint of as soon as possible, which means the activity starts, as it says, as soon as possible. But we're going to say that this activity actually can't start as soon as possible. It can't start until after January 11th. So we change this as soon as possible to start no earlier than. So start no earlier than. And over here on the right hand side, we scroll forward in our calendar to choose January 11th, Monday, January 11th. So that's now saying that this activity cannot start until Monday, January 11th. And we say OK to that. And notice that activity has flown off the Gantt chart over to the right hand side. Also now has a little calendar icon here. If you hover over it, it says this task has a start no earlier than constraint of Monday, the 11th of January. And notice also that your, your duration of your project has got much longer. So that's entering a constraint, which is point number 12. And finally, point number 13 is entering a lag, which is telling you that the celebration party doesn't take place immediately, but takes place at a delay of 10 days after the unpacking. So here's our celebration. It follows on from unpacking the boxes, but with a delay. So we double click celebrate. And in the predecessor tab, you can see here it follows on from unpack boxes. Yes, unpacking boxes needs to be finished before it can start. But over here on the right hand side is your lag. So we're saying there's a lag of 10 days. So you enter 10 under the lag column and you say OK. And notice now your, your predecessor column says it follows from this with a finish to start. The FS means finish to start. But there's a plus 10 days, which means nothing happens for 10 days. There's a lag of 10 days before the activity starts. So there are the points number 8 to 13 on your Office Move example. Attaching a note, entering a recurring task and moving it linking your tasks with the predecessors, also linking tasks that don't follow the task ahead of it. Also then putting in a start to start relationship in one instance, distributing boxes with a constraint. So we put in a constraint of a particular date and finally put in a lag.